Okay, I assume that's Tiger. Why is she making those noises? I hear some inane noises from the living room. A girl shouldn't be making these sounds in broad daylight. Well, Fujita is not a girly age anymore. We're not at a girly age. Actually, Tosca said the uh, never any aging mentality is, is a knack she developed when she was just three of us not crowding things. Or, yeah, okay, yeah. I don't know, I don't know, I thought. I can understand that sentence. But anyway, I was, I was trying to say it because, um. Because as it turns I learned that you pressing A turns on auto mode. I might try that. You know, like turning on auto mode, like everything will automatically just scroll. I don't know if it's like faster or slower. It's just so that I don't accidentally like skip the dialogue by, you know, double tapping the, the, the keyboard, you know, because I'm using spacebar to like uh, advance the text. Anyway. But uh, Fujine is steadily growing old by herself. And sure enough, it's Fujine in the living room with Seba. Yeah, but the, the problem with that is the fact that it moves too fast, though. At least for the the, t the okay for the for the narration, you know, for the text that's unvoiced, it goes a little bit too fast. I can't read it, so I don't know. I have to like maybe switch back and forth. When an unearthly sound, the wild beast undulates. Okay, I wonder what the hell Sakura is doing. A shoulder massage? Oh, is that what it was? It must feel quite good and it shows. The stripes on her shirts are loosening up and at this rate, she will be like butter soon. Mondo butter? That's mistaking the facts, Fujine. You forgot what you've done to me before. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the like, you know, unvoiced text goes a little bit too fast. I guess, you know, you're supposed to read it silently, but I always tend to just read it out loud anyway, because might as well. Otherwise, I'm, I'll be saying nothing for the entire visual novel. Um, there will be like a, you know, a playthrough without commentary, which I mean, it's already been done. So like, that's that's the reason I don't want to do that. I don't want to like stay silent recording a, a visual novel because otherwise, you know, there's no point. Somebody's already done that. Anyway, I don't know. So probably like switch back and forth maybe? Or is it just better to just press spacebar? I don't know. Oddly enough, when I tried the same on Kirizugu, he didn't like it. Maybe he didn't have a stiff constitution. Okay. So I ended up engaging in mortal combat with Fujine's stiff shoulders. Is that right, Sakura Nas? Jeez, I didn't grow up just to be able to massage food in his shoulders. Why not? Instead of, I don't know, instead of being a Segi no Miga to become the, the ally of shoulder massages? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> Once the procedure got going, I didn't slack off until Fujine told me she was fine. I couldn't just be lazy and get up by saying I was tired midway through. Hmm, I don't know, is this... I feel like this could be interpreted in a different way without context. Oh, 
Ujune gradually loosens up, though it's not only that, uh, somehow the scene itself just looks loo, yep. Also, I think I'm, I don't know, it's a little annoying just switching back. I mean, it's probably the most optimal way to go, but, uh, optimal way to, to go, but uh, it's just that the menu always keeps popping up there. It's kind of annoying me. I don't know. I'm just weird, I guess. I'm just gonna do it manually. Sakura keeps massaging with glee. それにしてもいい。テクしてるね、桜ちゃん。そんなことないですよ。うん、いや。この私が断言する。この気持ちよさは肩もみ乙女のものじゃないわ。What's with the embarrassing lingo? <laughs> Yeah, if we turn on the H scenes in Heaven's Field, then yes. <laughs> Stupid Tiger, what are you implying? That Sarka would, for me. Yeah, <laughs> まいばんまいばんマッサージさせてるのね。だからこんなにうまくなってるんだ。お、藤根。そんなに赤くなっちゃって。白もさくらちゃんに全身隅々マッサージされたいの。え、she <laughs> giggles. Getting a massage from Sakura, that would make me stiff and tense instead, hmm. Sakura, stiff indeed. No. Oh. Sakura's face is bright red as well, I wonder why. Yeah, we don't have the H scenes turned on. It's family friendly. Well, except, well, there is mature language, though, at least in, in this visual novel. Fujine <laughs> lets her shriek like nothing before. Sakura, just what did you poke in all the confusion? This is getting serious, but this is no time to be zoning out before Taiga gets all her bones broken. Fujine got carried away, got restrained once again. Scary. Same as Tosuka, Sakura must be master some kind of mysterious Chinese martial art. You see, she knows the basics of CQC. Yeah, you shouldn't kill her. That's what she says, and Fujine realizes has it moved for a while. I guess she's dead. I see. Better watch your mouth while Sakura is giving you a shoulder massage. Sakura-chan,こんな手組もあるだなんて抜かったわ。大丈夫ですか？もっと続きましょうか、先生。ああ、でも今のも聞いたわ。
Moving her head side to side with a creak, she stands up. ですから、なんか言ったらわかるんですか、先生。私と先輩は。なんというしやつ。と、とらわしを覚悟した。Actually dead. Fujine crumples, maybe pain, maybe happiness on her smiling face. Entering Buddha's realm or maybe Nirvana, a peaceful death. I can't believe Iger's dead. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. I guess pressing. What, what button did I press? I press R somehow. That I guess opens the log. Anyway. I do like it when Sakura does turn Yandere. Makes her character more interesting, to be honest. Because otherwise, she's like a boring, you know. She's kind of boring if she's not, like, uh, going, like, super edge mode. I don't know. The fact that she has like a darker side to her makes more makes her character more interesting. But anyway, okay, that well that was like the last day of the loop and we just restart all over again. Let's go again. So let's see, nothing here. Yeah, nothing new. Um we can go to the church again. Sure, let's try go over here. We have been getting some new information sometimes, so maybe going back here would introduce something new? I don't know. Going on the church on the first day, there's no, you know, Yorokobe for us to greet us, but... There are no signs of human presence in the chapel. The priest, Kotemine, is deceased. Well, officially, he's gone missing. A replacement had come, but he returned to his country some time ago. The church, as a result, was sealed off. Hmm. I rest myself on the bench. Left in solitude like this, many piled up questions to, uh, begin to resurface in my mind. There are several things I don't think about. The first and foremost among them... Okay, we just flash back to, our, I guess, Archer killing us? Which is weird because this is the first day, but probably, you know, Shiro's like, probably remembering some stuff. So that's why he remembers that scene. And I guess, Gil child, you know, child Gilgamesh is here. Shoda Gil. So says the blonde boy standing by the altar. Oh my. He walks towards me slowly. He gives me flashbacks of the figure of the former priest who once existed in this chapel. I don't know. I don't know why, but I kind of love Kirei. Like, he's super evil, but I love him as a villain, so I don't know, I just like him. He will pinpoint my words precisely expose the truth, I didn't want to know. It's just, it's just so, I'm just so disappointed that he's just not around, you know, unless maybe he comes, like, later, but... He's just not in the, in this game. Slacking off. Sure, I'm not aggressively trying to get to the bottom of the situation, but doesn't slacking off have more of a different nuance to it? Hmm. Well, I guess not. But I thought he was like being taught by uh, Rin and everything, but you know, Rin went to London, so maybe that's why. I didn't know how, no. I just didn't have the opportunity to practice. 
Now that someone has brought it up to me, it warrants only a... Uh... Oh, that's right. How do you know this, Gil? Have you been stalking us? <sighs> Just as the boy says, the very idea of Emiyashiro failing to train himself is abnormal. But that was the real cause behind this uneasy feeling. The question is, why had I forgotten this fundamental habit? I mean, if I remember correctly, at least the way he was training, Jiro, uh, before he met like Rin and everything, he was like trying to make a magical circuit every time he trained himself, which was really dangerous because he could accidentally kill himself every time he did it. But I don't know, maybe that that should that could be a reason. But then again, but then again, it's Jiro, so I don't know. If there is an enemy, then what was this feeling itself? Some kind of uh, if there is an enemy, then um, was this feeling itself some kind of magic planted by the enemy? You can't trace on. そんなことはできません。お兄さんは自分の技能を失念していただけ、使っていなかっただけです。人間知っていることは大抵何とかなるものですが、未知のことからだけは踏み込めない。知らないからできないんです。The hmm. gears start turning with a clang. The functions that simply existed but not have been activated gradually begin to move. そうだ。魔術回路は失われていない。その気になれば。Hmm, okay, interesting. Because I think he, he was saying something about how, like, you know, Archer was aiming at his head and he was like, I'm about to do something, but I don't know what. So, like, now he knows? Now he remembers? He can do, like, do something? At the very least? What I forgot was the way to fight. This is the route iron that no one else could copy, that no one else knew, possessed only by the magic user by the name of Emi Ashiro. けど、一度も使わずに実践なんて自殺行為ですからね。ちゃんといつもの場所で練習するのを忘れないでください。Okay, it's probably a gameplay hint, I guess, to go somewhere else, go to the shed first before crossing the bridge again, maybe. I guess that's all he had to say. The boy begins to leave the chapel the same way the former priest would. Hmm. Mm, interesting that again this is the it's kind of hard to like you know um keep it on my head but this is technically the first day and uh, the conversation we had with that boy was from a different day it was like a later day technically in the time loop and yeshua remembers this so yeah the memories are starting to leak through i feel like interesting mm, but I guess, uh, well, everyone else, you know, seems to like just get time looped. But not, not him, not Gilgamesh. He remembers. Shiro's starting to remember too. Before,今は嫌味でこっちを不機嫌にさせるんですけど、今はストレートに無視したりするんですよ。あれ、割ときついです。ポルカミゼリアです。ポルカミゼリア。What's that mean? Okay. Say what? Blondie goes up the stairs with a gloomy expression. Also, I have no idea who he's referring to. Some woman, I guess? That's like... Like his master? He said he, his master was Kirei, though. But technically not. I don't know. Well, that basic thing I forgot. I remember what the weapon, the one weapon that Emiyashiro, no, actually, I remember the fact that he has a weapon. As soon as I have a spare moment, I have to restart that training. Okay. When can we do that though? Right now? Maybe? Ah, uh, we can go to the storage room, but probably won't have, won't, I don't know if we'll be able to train though, because Ryder's there. Or we can go to our room and get a shoulder massage maybe, <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Ah, uh, we'll try to go to storage room anyway. I don't know. Maybe she'll reveal something. 
I don't know. Or maybe it was just cat. When I step outside the storehouse, having completed a bunch of tasks, I'm heading back to the house. Ryder is outside. Just heading out, or so I thought, she looks suspicious. Ryder, what's she doing? I immediately run upstairs and look out to the courtyard from the window. Hmm? Yeah? Hmm? She's keeping an eye on the house. Is she hiding from someone? Ryder acting that suspiciously is a rare sight. Is she going out shopping in secret? I can see Sokka or Saber trying something like this, but Ryder going out in this state of alertness. If Ryder wants to sneak out, all she has to do is jump up to the roof. If she does that, no one other than Saber can catch her or even notice her. So that means her girl isn't outside, it's inside the yard. Yes, Detective Shiro is on the case. What Ryder is interested in... That something is where the bicycles are stored. That I know. I run downstairs towards the front gate. I call out. Just as I thought, Ryder is currently crouching down examining bicycle number one. My one beloved bike. Bicycle number two is exclusively for shopping, a typical mamatari, complete with a basket stalled in the front. Number one on the on, on the other hand is a race bike. Uh, I can't I can't read. Number one on the other hand is a race bike with flat handlebars. Okay. She just loves to go fast. Is that the so-called secret? I guess, again, like a character development trait that we didn't know about Ryder in the first game, now we know. She loves riding bikes, or at least, you know, fast vehicles. I'm perfectly aware of her reasons, but I remain silent. Ryder is right, I should let her finish first. しかし、この Okay. No, this is the law of physics. Driving something that was designed to go uh, 20 km per hour at 100 km per hour is nothing short of suicidal. しかし、この1号は生ぬるい2号とは違い、高速走行可能な駆動系を有しています。これであれば、now I have absolutely no idea when the world writer's planning. <laughs> wants to go fast. <sighs> I'm sorry, but I don't, not really, and since I don't, the answer is straightforward. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Of course. I cannot afford a rocket of this kind that will run wildly around the neighborhood to be born from my garage. If 
低速ストレスで円形脱毛症にする気なのですか何アラ,ペアラペシアアリエタなるのかそんなんでそりゃ嫌だしさくらに泣きつかれそうだがやっぱりダメ The birth of a crazy train isn't the only issue here. If she uses this chance to increase her sphere of influence, the power balance at her house, already precarious at best, will start to slide even more. To put it bluntly, my position is diminishing. Okay. Shiro. Shiro. Anata no ichigo wo tsukawase te morae nai no nara. Watashi wa kyoko shudan ni teru shika arimasen. Nani? She's gonna stab us. Masaka Raida. Bianchi? Is that what, that's what the bike is called? No, it's the last one. I'm not a saber. Suddenly, Ryder's view on saber becomes very clear. Shiro, this one is not just one thing. If you don't want to give up one thing, it's okay. I'm the other one. より高速な乗馬に目をつけるだけです。手始めに大河の原付を、そして藤村組の大型バイクを拝借しましょう。Man, yeah, probably a motorcycle, maybe. I'm, well, she says big bike. I assume she's meaning motorcycle, right? I, 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 if she wants to go fast, that's what she would do. She's venting her anger and is venting it on me. Big bike. Would that be the old man Rigas that I worked on? Or would that be old man's Rigas that I worked on? With my strength alone, I couldn't even lift that monstrosity if, I, if it were to fall. You know, I guess it's her name because she's Rider, so that's why she wants to ride vehicles. I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's what he thought. Rider, that's why she likes to ride bikes. If she's going to charge around the road, she needs to follow the traffic laws. No one can interfere with riders on her Pegasus, but if she's riding a motorcycle, she has to follow human society's rules. Rider and a case of no goya kind in Atra, which was a bot serzo, Sakra and a wona kiste. Sakura's influence is not to be underestimated. We <laughs> okay, that's a funny animation, but then again, I can't see Rider letting herself get caught by police either. You know, she gets five stars, tanks, and helicopters try to chase her, but she'll always get away. Ryder looks visibly discouraged. Seems like she's finally given up. Number one is a no go, but when I have time, I'll try to assemble a number four for her to use. Something better than a mama tati. Suddenly, there's a whispering voice beside my ear. Now what? Ryder walks up to my side, her icy hand stroking the back of my neck. She's using her seduction now? Dema. Ah, yes, equivalent exchange. You must sacrifice something worth to you. <laughs> Her fingers slide under my chin. Her lips almost nibbling my ear in an imaginably sweet voice. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned it in the Heaven's Feel, but in the Heaven's Feel playthrough, uh, remember that wet dream that Shiro had, you know, where like, what was it, like Rin basically? Um, was like drinking his blood or something like that. I believe, like, I don't know if I said it out loud, but the implication is that it was Ryder, you know, influencing his dream. It was probably Ryder that was sucking his blood, by the way. 
because but at the end of the CG, uh, Rin's eyes open and change into like a rider's eyes, you know, like 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 rectangular, squarish pupils. Like that. I just wanted to mention that because it seems relevant right now. Her voice echoes like an incantation. What I desire from Ryder. What I want to do to Ryder. Anything. Did she use some kind of seduction spell? My body is burning up, but the feel of Ryder's skin is as cold as groundwater. My head starts spinning, the surroundings are muddled, and it feels like I'm about to say something unthinkable. Ryder, I want you to farm some QP. Ryder, それは何でもいいのですよ。私もシェロが。Now this will definitely make Sakura cry. <laughs> He gently caresses my cheek. Facing her, there's no escape from the seductive eyes that are now piercing me. <laughs> oh, there she is. There she is. Huh? That's strange. Is Sakura staring at us? <laughs> okay. <laughs> With a swoosh, Ryder's hand slipped away like a snake, nonchalantly, as if nothing had happened. Stop stealing my boyfriend. Okay. She heard everything word for word. She sure can change gears fast. Riders peddling the number two like she saw a ghost, disappearing to me in the blink of an eye. Wait, well, it's not like I didn't do any of the things I want to do with you with Ryder? <laughs> this is such a strange misunderstanding. Ah, I have to find Ryder later. Need, need to get her to explain things to Sakura. No. NTR. Anyway. Uh, oh, we can, uh, yeah. I imagine we can go to the shack now and start practicing our magic. We must strengthen some objects. Race on. My heart is beating fast. A clear sense of purpose is thickening the blood throughout my body. My body continued to plead even as my mind was unaware. Go there. Take back your former self. Know your weapon. Without it, I can't fight alongside Saber. My body remembered that truth. Sitting in a full lotus position, I focus my nerves. How long have I not done this? Seeing as I can't recall even that, I might have problems just activating the circuits. I have no confidence in myself. With the intention of going all the way back to the basics, I buried deep in myself. But it seems that all my worries were pointless. Activating my circuits and attempting reinforcement magic succeeded without a hitch. As it turns out, he's not rusty at all. It's like, uh, well, it's like learning how to ride a bike. <laughs> Anticlimactic, but I suppose this is what it usually feels like to get out of a slump. Also, surprisingly, this was interesting in itself. 
This was the first time that I felt fun to train and use magic. Hmm. I can finally go further. Even further beyond. I think of the sniper that I shouldn't have seen yet. Hmm. I finally remember what my own weapon is. Now I'll polish this power for as long as time permits. A projection magic is available. In the wilderness where the cicadas sing, there lies the enemy. Hmm. In the wilderness? Not not Archer? Interesting. The cicadas sing. Higarashi? No Nakakoro ni? I don't know. So I wonder, should I go to the bridge? Or go somewhere else to like practice the projection magic in order to like... Do something with it? I don't know. Well, for now, let's go hang out with Saber. Interesting that Saber is here and here as well. Somehow she can just be in two places at once. I don't know. It's come to be a late lunch. To calm my stomach's grumbling, I take my lunch and head for the park. The park on this clear autumn day seems to be uh, seems to be almost as crowded as it would be on the weekend. The benches are pretty much all taken. Looking for a place to sit down, I walk along the riverside. From the mouth of the river, I can smell the salty fragrance of the autumn breeze. No wonder it's starting to feel cold. But thanks to the deep blue sky and bright sunshine, even those are forgotten before long. The weather is truly refreshing today. On the other side of the swaying, radiant golden ginkgo trees, the voices of children cheering and the sound of a ball being bounced around reach me. Soccer. A game of soccer, eh? Yep, did that. Together with Shinji. Okay. It was a snowy, snowy day. Very unusual. Back then, Shinji lost one of his shoes. Well, whatever. He sucks. Screw him. Having found a nice grassy spot near the playground, I sit down cross-legged. Won't be long before I'll be able to see the outline of my stomach. It's gotta look like a deflated soccer ball already. Is that normal? I don't know. Wasting no time, I take out my two-tier container and dig in wholeheartedly. As soon as my consciousness comes back, I look up, still munching. Out on the field, 4 verse 4, 8 kids are struggling with the ball. Munching on my soy sauce boiled burdock, I keep watching the game. What I thought was a mere child's play is actually looking pretty good. Looks like the attack and defense are well aware of their roles. Despite having an unusual number of players, this isn't just a kid's game, it's more of a mini-match. Okay, this is like the second time that she was just watching a kid's soccer game, I guess. Or was it soccer last time? I can't remember. You know, the one with like Gil was playing as well? I've been watching for a while, I noticed that the two kids on the inside are clearly different. Their pass is quite nice looking. Seems like they're going easy on the rest. Must be the local soccer club members or something. Thinking that, I see one energetic guy just vigorously kicking the ball forward. Falling victim to feints in an amusing way, he keeps pitching forward. Seeing that pitiful but persistent little figure, I suddenly get an urge to help him out. And it wasn't just me who felt that way. From the opposite end of the field, a jeans-clad figure is cheering in his support. And not in the usual cheerleading way, but rather expressing her own joy and sorrow, relaying it as the match progresses. The kids seem to notice it too, feeling awkward whenever they hear her voice. Definitely not Japanese. The hair is a pretty golden color, a white, slender, girl-like figure. Oh, okay, it's Saber. And I definitely remember seeing the huge lunchbox at her feet before. Wait, now that I look at it, aren't those my shirt and jeans? Saber? Yep, no mistake. That blue ribbon definitely saved her. Actually, now that the weather is nice, she did say that she was going out sometime during the day. But the moment I stand up about the wave to Saber, who's completely immersed in the game, one of the kids stops the match and turns toward her. The other kids start gathering as well. Okay. I guess oh, those are like the little outlines over there. I think Saber is in the middle right there. 
As the kids come closer, Sabre looks around herself nervously. Several kids voice their agreement. テレビでは well, bending then straightening her knees, Saber meets the kids' unimpressed stares. Ow. She bows her head deeply. Suddenly, a ball drops in her lap. Okay. And the one who threw it is that very same reckless kid from before. Taking the ball, her eyes are shining. Eros? Barfer? Okay. Yeah, don't be racist, kid. I guess I don't know. She's from Britain. Oh, the kids all let out. Well, they call it football there, don't they? Gateball? I don't know what gateball is. The boy that called out the saber clicks his tongue. Okay. Saber nods, perplexed. Somehow they're just talking about countries now. Says the boy with glasses. いえ、それが一度もやってみたことがないのです。冗談。めちゃめちゃかぶりつきで見てたし。つうかさ、女はやらねえってこと。サッカーをですか？いえ。Saber is looking at the ball in her hands. ずっと興味はあったのですが、鍛錬に追われる日々で挑戦する機会がありませんでした。けれど、兵たちが教じている様子はよく見かけたものです。ルールも多少は存じているつもりです。that's interesting. Did the soccer exist in medieval times? That's not that's just not something I really thought about actually. Like, I don't know. It was like I mean probably some sort of sports were available, but like maybe not in the not in the same way that we think sports today, maybe? I don't know. How old is soccer? Or football, I guess, technically. Or, I don't know, it's, it's football, right? In, like, you know, in England, technically. That's what you call it. Well,そのようなものです. A clerk? Which is like a self-defense force? Now before long, I see them choose a representative from each team and with rock, paper, scissors, decide which team is going to take the foreign player on. Soon, Saber goes out on the field surrounded by the kids. Okay.
Whoa! CG? Amazing. Now that's a relief. Should there have been trouble, uh, I was ready to force my way through the crowd of children, but it ended up working out. Continuing where I left off the chopsticks, I resume my meal. A mischievous thought crosses my mind, and I slide over to a nearby tree, hiding myself in the shade. Look at her tummy. Again, I don't know, I, I just want to mention again, I wish she had abs. She did say she, you know, she had like a manly figure. At the very least, she should look athletic, but, uh, you know, she just draws like a very, like, I don't know, just very normal. Not particularly athletic, and yet she's like a soldier, right? I imagine... If she was a soldier, you know, she probably did a lot of combat, despite the fact- Because I've, I've learned that Saber, most of her power comes from mana, but... I, I think she would look better if she also had the physique for it too, I don't know. Anyway. Seba! As she's protesting, her intent gaze is following the ball that was sent high up in front of her. The awkward game continues for a while. No matter how sure she is, she still looks out of place playing alongside kids. But Saber herself pays no notice. Her face shining brightly, even the kids, feeling the joy, soon stop going easy on her and begins the real match. That's when it really became a sight uh, worth watching. And also, I mean, I guess she's like... Hitting it with her knee? It looks like she's gonna punch the ball though, I don't know. That's You don't punch the ball, Saber. Alright, before my eyes, she starts to get used to ha handling the ball by mimicking the kid's movements. In a span of a few minutes, her movements change completely. Even as the ball goes outside the field, she casually brings it back into the game. And even the opposing team can no longer just kick the ball towards the safety zone. Their passes are becoming more cautious. Speaking of which, the soccer club member-like kid that I noticed a while back, as expected, Saber's chasing him, but he manages to keep her at bay with feints. Suddenly slowing down, he kicks the ball in a direction entirely different from where he's looking, tricking Saber hilariously. But that's not happening a second time. While pretending to go for a long-range kick, he passes the ball to a nearby teammate instead. Seeing through the maneuver, she quickly catches up. Finally, the ball is hers. Unfortunately, her four teammates are still behind her. She's all alone, right in the middle of the enemy field. That's when she releases Excalibur and murders all the kids, what now? As if unsure what to do next, she looks back. The response comes back as a mix of high-spirited voices. <laughs> Saber's face suddenly becomes serious. The opposing team had gone on attacking too deeply, and it looks like they're now short-handed. The defender, also the goalkeeper, hurries back to the net. Gliding along the grass, she dribbles towards the goal. She's now facing the goalkeeper one-on-one. -on -one. A straight shot, without a trace of hesitation. Deeply intimidated, the keeper cowers in fear. Raising the top of his head, the ball flies up and wow, the sound effects are like swords, like combat swords. It hits the top bar, rebounds, and soars high into the sky. Like the sound effects were literally the same sound effects like when, you know, Saber's like fighting someone. As if the signs of disappointment, out comes the energetic boys' cry. Looking up, the ball that's already become but a black dot in the sky is now being pushed back by the headwind. Aiming for the landing spot, Saber dashes back. In the real game, a ball that's crossed the line in the air would be an out, but this place has its own rules. In other words, the ball is still in play. Struggling to regain the lead, the opposing team comes running back and surrounds her. Using her torso and knees as a spring, Saber leaps up in the air, easily over a man's height, and... Grabs the falling ball. Oops. I thought she was gonna do it like, you know, the... The type of kick where she like does like a flip, you know, and it kicks the ball back into the net, but I, I guess she just grabs it. <laughs> Oops. Her sure floats in the air as she lands. In front of the dumbfounded kid, Saber throws the ball. Behind the petrified goalkeeper, the, neck, the net is shaking. A goal! Sort of. <laughs> Striking a tri triumphant pose, she turns to face the kids only to be met with blank stares. <laughs> okay. 
いやいやあ,あ She hurriedly tucks her now messy shirt into her pants. Mi e m a s t a k a Jeans got scoshi yurukte. So the nate. Miruka y b a g a Ore m i e t a Okay. Joining of the kids' is red in cheeks, the palm of my hand meets my face. Again, technically in England it is football, right? Unless, I don't know, unless I'm completely wrong for some. I, I mean, I don't know. That's what I always be, because,、uh, you know, I'm, I'm from Canada. We call soccer soccer, but the, the usual term for soccer in, outside of North America tends to be football, which gets, you know, kind of gets mistaken for American football, and that's the whole, you know, thing. That people get confused about. Being put on the spot, she's getting nervous. Well, it's not like exactly undeserved. Rugby. Rugby. She questions with a blank face. Oh, well, actually, they are going to mention that. Okay. Once again, the boy playing as the goalkeeper raises his hand. Oh, so you e m i d a t e a o r e a t a s n o s t e n d e s a i g o a y o k i o k e s Raising her droop head back up, Saber folds his arms deep in thought.、うん How's that work? Wait, isn't that American football then? On the street, what, what kind of sport is she referring to? I mean, I guess she's, you know, medieval times, so I don't know. Oh, yeah, in the Age of Kings, what Saber had watched must have been a, a predecessor to what is known as soccer today. But then it's Saber we're talking about. The form might be a little different, but anything that involves moving your body around, she'll get used to in no time. But that's not what worries me. Also, how is Shiro hearing all of this? They're pretty far away, I don't know. Unless they're speaking very loudly. The kids exchange semi amazed glances. The kids have suspicion all over their faces. Pushing Saber outside their circle, they put their heads together and start whispering. And as usual, the energ-、uh, energetic boy's voice. No freaking way! Yeah, right, it's always my fault. <laughs> and other noises, what a lively fellow. Soon they break up and turn to face Saber once again. Here we go. Saber's unique trait and her weakest point, her inability to accept defeat. The kids' face turned pale. Even if she's a beginner, they realize who they're dealing with. 
as can only be expected of the king of all beasts. The matter of the opponents are a bunch of little kids, asking to take it easy is pointless. And thus starts a rock paper scissors game to separate the living from the dead. Uh, they're, li they're literally going to die. After a series of shouts have finished resounding throughout the playground, the teams are decided. As the two groups separate, Saber seems confused. I guess that's how it works. Wait a minute, if... But then... Because this is a handicap now, but then what kind of teams did you have before? You know, if you only had like, uh, nine people, you can't really separate into a fair team anyway. I don't know. Before starting the match, they pick someone to go buy some drinks and are now giving him their requests. Aside, the conversation with Saber continues. <laughs> Caught off guard by a remarkably loud scream echoing throughout the playground, the kids go quiet for a moment. I guess he doesn't like that nickname. However, the silence doesn't last long, is now being replaced by a debate about drink brands. Nice. <laughs> I was gonna say Dr. Pepper, the drink for geniuses. You see, um, I don't know. I don't know. Most of, I, I don't know if most of those brands are they made up or are they real? I don't know. Maybe so it's like it's Japan, so I don't know. I don't know most of the brands. Having procured the drinks, the kids plop down onto the grass in small groups and take a break. And also interesting that they can get hot drinks, you know. That's not really a thing, you know, outside of Japan. In Japan, there's like vending machines that literally just have hot drinks ready and prepared. So, that's cool. Saber is kneeling down next to a boy sitting cross-legged. For some reason, she looks restless. Looks like she remembered that unlike usual, she isn't wearing her skirt. Carefully checking around her, she timidly tries a cross-legged pose. <laughs> How's that? Her satisfied expression seems to say, and we're, and, we're, and literally with Shiro, just watching this from a distance, is kind of, I don't know. Isn't it a little... creepy? <laughs> Hiding myself deeper within the shade, I feel a tinge of regret. That's a lie. In fact, I'm barely suppressing the laughter that's threatening to burst forth. Saber starts talking to the energy board beside her. Another boy plops down his stomach beside them.俺はシュートがしたいんだよ。フォワードで。言っても入れたことねえけどな。だ、いつだっけ。こんな近くからのシュートを腹でチョックに受けちゃってさ。ウィーって。なるほど。だから結構もこの<笑> あ、走ることはありません。名誉の不詳です。ゲロじゃ相手からファール取れねえって。あれ、元の名前なんだっけ？なんか言ってたよね。今日から俺はゲロストンだっけ？ガリクソンじゃねえか？違えよ。while scratching his head, the boy says, Spain, 
それだ Right at that moment, Saber's eyes slip wide open and her gaze fixes on the boy in front of her. I wonder why. I don't know. Is it referring to Tristan? Because I, I know a Tristan and Faye go, and, she, and he's related to like Saber's lore, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Tristan, I guess she, she likes the name because Tristan was one of the knights of the round table, you know. He says, pointing at the proud looking saber. Yes, the battlefield. Confused, Tristan's cheeks start burning red. Taking the initiative, Saber stands up straight. Seventy-seven versus eighty-eight. What is that? Yeah, I like I like Saber's like shocked face. I don't know. The game begins. Just prior, Saber kept insisting that Tristan should come out in front, but he absolutely wouldn't budge. Saber's size outnumbered. Goalkeepers aside, the teams are three on four. With this few players, a difference of even one may end up affecting the match far more than expected. Okay, we're gonna keep. I guess you know. We're gonna keep uh, being on this scene with Saber and some kids playing soccer. Once the ball is theirs, the basic strategy is to attack while passing it between Saber and one other player. However, that leaves one defender to back up the two of them. Just one, not exactly reliable. On the other hand, the opposing team, in addition to having one defender, can use the remaining player as a midfielder for both offense and defense in a much more soccer like manner. Looks like the kids didn't mention anything about an offside rule. In that case, for Saber, with her speed, it would be advantageous to press deep within the enemy side, I'd guess. However, the passes get cut too often. The attack soon crumbles, and the entire team is forced to defend. Saber's team is clinging onto its field and can't make a move. A cry comes toward them from the goal. The keeper himself cannot advance in front. Instead, shouting at the top of his lungs, the boy points out the best spot to attack. Now is the chance. Gracefully stopping the ball that was cleared by her team, she's advancing forward. Her dribbling, picture perfect. Wow. A world of difference from before, with this, neither allies nor enemies will catch her. That's right. Opposed by the numerous enemies, Saber is literally playing two roles. The opposing team's defender stands in her path. Wee Animation! <laughs> Slowing down, looks as if she's about to pass the ball to her teammate on the other side. Suddenly, turning her body around, she dashes forward yet again. A feint. Having artfully, uh, artfully handled the opponent, she leaves him behind. Well done. Now only the goalkeeper remains. She learned from her, uh, you know, her previous mistake. Learn from the enemy. Her teammates' cheers intensify, never stopping her feet for even a moment, Saber nods. Even the goalkeeper already has the vision of her last shot flashing before him. Seeing the image of a roaring lion approaching from the front, he knows he's already Mo Shinderu. At an even greater distance this time, she finally assumes the shooting position. Is it confidence? Or maybe just, maybe just compassion for the keeper, giving him time to run away? A flash of her foot like a bow releasing an arrow. A gunshot 
like sound reverberates through the field. My cheeks shiver as if having received an electric shock. He kicks the ball so hard that it literally kills the kid. Oh no. Covering their ears, the kids are petrified. Did she break the sound barrier? She did say she'll be serious. It gets serious, she definitely did. Yeah, it's Saber after all. <laughs> this is the end. Fearing the worst, I look over the goal. And it's a corpse. No. What's uh, left of the kid, a gaseous mist of red particles, well, not quite. Huddled behind the goalposts, the poor kid finally dares to crack open his eyelids. Okay. I guess that, that was the implication, that literally the, the kid exploded and Saber murdered someone. Wouldn't that be like a twist? Suddenly, just, she just murders someone. There's no ball, and neither is there a gaping hole. All that's there is, is a soft breeze swaying the net. The agitated kids turn towards Saber. With a shamed face, she points toward the sky. Nani? A mix of angry cries, screams, and shouts of joy pierce the autumn sky. Like a boomerang or maybe some kind of UFO, the pitiful remains of the ball, split into a big Mitsubishi shape, come flying back. Oh. Oh, Saigusa, we know her. But I guess, yeah, she kicked it so hard the ball broke. Saber hangs her head in shame. In the meantime, the remains of the ball finally land on a nearby thicket. Having received the full force of the impact, the synthetic leather has split magnificently. Straight line burn marks evident on the surface, the latest victim to witness Saber's deadly attack. A new noble phantasm. She kicks someone very hard, and they explode. I hesitate for a while. Shall I watch the match till the end, or shall I leave before they notice me? I want to keep watching, but I shouldn't interfere with this development. Okay, Shiro finally, after, I don't know, it's just weird, he's just watching from a distance. This whole time. Much as I hate to leave, there's one thing I can do. That being, to race on. Oh, we do, we do remember our magical abilities now, so... Amazing. Mourning over their fallen comrade, only Tristan manages to not fall into despair. でも、俺のボールはここに放流したんだ。ああ、前のPKセンの時のゲロスのか。PKであんな飛距離稼いだシュート初めて見たよな。No oh, PK penalty kick. That's what it means. When I see PK. When I see PK, I think of uh, you know, PK fire. And then suddenly the soccer ball comes back. Oh! Bouncing up high as it hits the ground, it's now in Saber's hands. Amazing. The power of God. God just gave back the ball. The scar marks are still there, yet it definitely holds air. I'm still watching, but now from the thicket behind them, lying on the ground. Okay, why is Shiro being weird? He's just prone on the ground, taking, you know, uh, using camouflage to sneak around. The kids huddle around Saber, gawking in her hands. Uh, not quite, but very close. 
いえ魔術は不得意ですほら戻ってきたじゃんなあ生きてんのかよっていうか復活これはそうですねきっと魔法です Literally Saber is holding on to their precious ball tightly. Sate. Now that the secret is out, it's time to retreat. Saber's innocent joy of playing soccer with the kids will be spoiled by seeing me here. Okay, I don't. But, but why? I don't understand. Can't you just go up? Or not? I don't know. Why have you just watching at a distance? You would think either he would leave or just join in, but no, he's just watching from a distance, so I don't know. <laughs> Sneaking around, I quietly leave the playground. Right then, where should I go for the afternoon? Alright then, where should I go? Hmm.